What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here and as promised, I'm doing another top 10 video, continuing with my thoughts of making these a more regular thing. And uh, this time I wanted to start 2022 off with something and it serves a couple of different purposes. So this is my top 10 non Dungeons and Dragons or other than traditional D&D RPGs that I would like to play. Now I've talked about other games that I like in the past and I've mentioned in recent, I think it was either in a video or a live stream, at some point someone had asked, you know, what other games are you interested in playing? And I thought, oh, that would make a pretty good top 10 because there's probably more than 10, but these were the first that came to mind when I went through that. So uh, I will say that these are, yeah, they're some of them might fall in the same fantasy vein as Dungeons and Dragons, but not Dungeons and Dragons traditionally. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll do my best to kind of showcase some of these. Um, but anyway, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'm trying to make that number hit 100 so I can get that cool YouTube plaque and also continue to build uh, the channel and grow it. And the only way I can do that is if you subscribe. So anyway, if you consider doing that, that'd be awesome. We'll jump right into the video now. Number 10. So this one's kind of a sort of a cop out, but not really. And it's some of the hacks of 5e. Now, technically, the game isn't Dungeons and Dragons. It's using the 5e mechanics, but we're not playing D&D. And there are two of them primarily that I'm interested in. One is Dungeons and Destiny, which is essentially replicating the Destiny game, which if you didn't notice the Ace of Spades over my shoulder here, I'm clearly a big fan of Destiny. And it's a whole kind of homebrew system that someone uh, or a team, I'm not entirely sure who made it, but um, yeah, it's a whole system to basically replicate the world of Destiny, but using 5e mechanics. And I would say, you know, space guardians while there is magic it's primarily focused on gunplay uh is vastly different than dungeons and dragons and it's one of the ones that i would definitely like to get a chance to either run or play and the other one is star wars 5e which again is pretty self-explanatory now a lot of these um there may be other dungeons and dragons hacks 5e hacks to play other games that I'm unfamiliar with, but these are the two primary ones that I've seen the most, I've looked through the most. And honestly, if you wanted to convert some of these things back to 5e, you probably could within reason. But I just think it's something to start it off simple with things with mechanics that I understand, but slightly tweaked enough and I, apparently both in space. Number nine. Call of Cthulhu. Now, I'm no stranger to sort of Lovecraft and the world and kind of what happens in Call of Cthulhu. I've seen some streams. I talked to a buddy who had run it a lot. Uh, I had talked to some of the folks from Chaosium and there was like an app, like a storytelling sort of Call of Cthulhu app uh, that I interviewed some folks at Gen Con about years ago. Um, so I know what kind of happens in the world of Call of Cthulhu, and it's higher on this list because it's not something that I'm desperately wanting to play. I do want to play it because I do think I would, I'd be interested, especially for someone who talks about some of the lack of lethality, as it were, with 5e. Um, obviously, Call of Cthulhu would be hard the other direction where you don't want to encounter stuff, right? You want to get out of there. Plus, I think the sanity mechanic uh, could be really, really fun to play around with and that whole horror aspect. I do think these. this is a game, not to say that all games don't rely on this, but a DM or, or whatever the, the, the GM for Call of Cthulhu, I think they really need to get it. And they're like more important in this than I think a lot of others. Because, I mean, one thing that often comes to mind when I think of Call of Cthulhu is the GameCube game Eternal Darkness, which was one of my favorite games. That had an amazing sanity mechanic in it. I would love to see something similar. Uh, or, you know, when I, the best way I could do that would be with Call of Cthulhu. So um, I don't know if I'd be super interested in playing something long-running in Call of Cthulhu, but my, my understanding is just based on the way the games are, they're not usually very long-running. They're more one shoddy as it were because the game is usually that lethal but i really have no experience and i love to give it a shot 
again, as a player, not as a, as a GM. Number eight. The One Ring. Uh, this is a Free League publishing game. I'm familiar with Free League via some of the, the Alien stuff that they've done, which I haven't really gotten a chance to play around with. But, yeah, I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, I Obviously, I was in high school uh, when the Lord of the Rings movies became a thing, and that was my first introduction, really, to the whole world and all of Tolkien's works and things like that. It also happened to be around the same time that I was getting into Dungeons & Dragons at the same time. So I was really into Lord of the Rings, and I would love to get a chance to play in a game in that same world. The, some of the video games, I think a lot of us all have memories of playing The Two Towers or Return of the King, the video games on you know, our GameCube or PS2 or Xbox back in the day. Some of the games like Shadows of Mordor or fantastic games that I really enjoyed playing. So I love and I'm in love with the Lord of the Rings mythology and things of that nature. Now, I know there is a 5e Lord of the Rings series that exists, but uh, I think I want to I want to play the one ring version of it more because I'd like to try a different system. And I think it could be interesting to try this free league publishing version. And it's one that a lot of folks have really put in a lot of, I've seen a lot of really good reviews for it. Uh, and I would love to, to get a chance to play in it. And I, once again, I think this is another one where, um, you know, if a DM is really familiar with the system, but also familiar with the source material, it can go a long way. Um, but yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to play in the world of the Lord of the Rings? So this is definitely on my list. And, you know, it's just really, for me, with all of these, finding the time and then someone willing to run a game for me. Number seven. Vampire. Could be the Masquerade, could be the Requiem. I'm not necessarily picky on which version of Vampire it is, but I, I, a buddy of mine actually in my senior year of high school bought a Vampire the Masquerade. Like it was a, it was an older, it was a book, but I don't remember it was a setting. Um, it was like an ancient, like an older time setting rather than being like set cur in current period times. It was, a, you know, more of like a Victorian one. And, you know, we used to take turns reading that book. And he didn't, I don't think, actually understood that it was a role-playing game. I did at the time because I was, again, playing Dungeons & Dragons, so that kind of stuff made sense to me. Um, but I was always very interested in the different clans and the different powers of the different vampires. And I, I think I own Vampire the Requiem, but I know, like, there's been the return to form with Vampire the Masquerade. I want to say it's 5th edition. Um, and I would really like to get a chance to play in it. And, you know, I was... It, I feel like I like the different abilities they have. And, I mean, I'm no stranger to vampire lore and things like that. I've always been a huge Castlevania fan, although I'm much more in the Belmont corner than I am in the vampire corner. But I really liked Underworld, and I thought that, that could be that's kind of in a similar vein to what I'm thinking about uh, when I think of vampire. And I just, again, I would love to play in it, but most of the time, especially because this channel is obviously so focused on Dungeons & Dragons, a lot of the people, when they reach out about trying to get in touch about playing a game or being on a stream or whatever, it's usually about Dungeons & Dragons, which I'm not complaining about. I would love to be in more D&D campaigns. Uh, but... Again, until the reality of making Nerd Immersion a full-time thing for me, I don't think getting the opportunity to play in that many more games is going to be a possibility. But Vampire, I, I really love the whole World of Darkness universe. It all stemmed from the first time I think I played Hunter the Reckoning back on the GameCube, and that really kind of opened my eyes to the World of Darkness, and I just fell in love with all of the different aspects of it. But out of all of the ones, there's been a couple that I really like in Vampire. Just seems like, and it's also very popular right now too. So I feel like the opportunity to get to, into a game is much more likely than some of the other lesser known ones. Number six. Star Wars Edge of the Empire. Now I've seen this one play and I know it has a lot of like funky dice. And I know there's some apps to like kind of alleviate some of the issues with the dice rolling. Uh, and it seemed pretty interesting uh, from what I had seen. I think I saw an Ack Inc. where they played it, and I was excited to give that a try. Um, so I was a huge Star Wars fan growing up in elementary school and middle school. And uh, I'm not going to get into my feelings on Star Wars, uh, but 
I kind of fell out of love with Star Wars for a long time. I was big into the expanded universe stuff for a while, uh, reading all like the Jedi Knight Academy books and stuff like that. But with uh, the return uh, in my mind of uh, with Mandalorian and things like that, really kind of reinvigorating my love for Star Wars. Uh, and, you know, getting it like playing jokes of playing a Blade Singer in my Rod of Seven Parts campaign and basically having my character be a Jedi, actually sampling some of the abilities from Star Wars 5e that we talked about and turning them into 5th edition spells. Uh, I really like, I would like to play a Star Wars game set in a Star Wars system. And Edge of the Empire is, I know there were other ones in the past, but I know Edge of the Empire is the most recent one. And it seems like it's got a lot of support for it. There's a lot of different options out there. It's also something that I think people would be willing to run. One of my friends, actually, who played in the Rod of Seven Parts campaign with me, got me a copy of, like, the starter kit set for Star Wars. So I think it would be really fun to get a chance to just run through that and live in the Star Wars universe, but using a system specifically designed uh, to handle it. So I think it could be a lot of fun. Um, here's my nerf amban rifle right there so again star wars fan for sure so it, it just i don't know i would like to i'm really just getting an opportunity to play in some of my favorite franchises outside of dungeons and dragons would be huge for me number five heading back to the world of darkness uh, realm we're going with scion and if you're unfamiliar with the game scion or the system you know that so again the way the world of darkness is, is it's the same sort of core dice system and the way those things work, but whatever sort of creature or otherworldly being you are playing, the mechanics and what you're able to do are different, right? So you'd have the same stats. Uh, you might have higher numbers in a given stat if you're playing Vampire versus Scion. Scion is basically demigods, children of gods or powerful beings and things of that nature. Um, I was really trying, I had seen for a while and I love, uh, I always was a huge fan of Greek mythology growing up. Uh, I read as many Greek mythology books as I could in elementary school and middle school. Xena and Hercules were on TV when I was a kid. So I was a huge fan of both of those. My whole family were, we loved those shows. Uh, I love the Percy Jackson series and pretty much anything that Rick Riordan puts out at all. I eat that stuff up. Uh, and the best option I could think of to try to emulate one of those sort of stories about a demigod child would be via the Scion game. And I actually have been in a, I have a Discord kind of channel set up uh, to, with two or three people that I've been just teasing them, pulling them along about trying to run a game where I was going to run a Percy Jackson game for them using Scion and I think it will be a really fun thing. I think a lot of folks would love to uh, to see that and, and get a you know a chance to emulate that. And you know, and uh, then everybody involved are huge Percy Jackson fans as well. So, um, but I, you know, I'd just be interested. And I've seen some folks have played it, but I do think it's one of the lesser known World of Darkness properties. I'd say things like Mage, Werewolf, Vampire, are obviously higher on the list. Uh, but Scion is out there, and I think it could be a lot of fun. And because I'm familiar with the World of Darkness mechanics, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch for me to get an opportunity. Number four. A superhero RPG. And I know that's kind of broad spectrum, but there have been so many over the years. I have, like, Heroes Unlimited, which was an old Palladium Games one from back in, like, the 70s. I know Masks is very popular, which I believe is powered by the Apocalypse, but I could be wrong. I know Marvel has had a ton of different RPGs. I know they have a current one that they're in the process of developing, or it's out or it's coming out soon. Um, I played in a Marvel RPG, which was one where you didn't roll dice. You had, like, PowerPoints that you put uh, in that one of my friends was going to run for us. And I made a, we made a character. We were all going to be X-Men. It was a whole thing, and we were all super excited. And the first encounter we got into, the, the the Game Master put us up against, in like a Danger Room simulation, against Abomination, and we couldn't win. Because there's no random chance of rolling dice, uh, you have your points, right? But Abomination's damage resistance and healing factor was so great that no matter how much damage the three of us did together in a turn... We could never get enough damage to shut down his healing enough to ever defeat him. 
And that really automatically turned me off to that version. But recently, um, within the past year, one of my friends ran the old, like, 1970s Marvel RPG, uh, which has, like, a whole... Everything's basically free for that online, and he ran that, and I had an absolute blast playing that game. So I would love to have the opportunity to play a superhero. I mean, I don't know how many times we've all, as nerds, gotten into the conversation of which superhero is better, who would win in a fight, all that kind of stuff. And I always think it would be really cool to craft my own superhero and develop it out, you know? So in... That one Marvel RPG that I had played that didn't go anywhere, I had crafted an X-Men, so I was a mutant, but I was kind of, uh, I had, you know, angel wings that I could fly, but I can control the weather and shoot energy blasts, and that was that character. The character I played in um, the old school Marvel RPG, I basically made static shock, you know, I had electricity powers and all that kind of stuff, and if I was going to play a new one, I think I'd want to have earth powers almost like an earth bender style character where i could like make rock walls and things of that nature and then see what kind of fun stuff i could play around with that um so i don't know i I just think it would be really fun to play uh build your own superhero and then if you're playing with a party you get to build your own team together and come up with like team stuff i think it could be a lot of fun uh but masks is the one i always see people playing so i feel like that's the one i'd have to do because that's the most common one that I see. But again, I like Powered by the Apocalypse, so I I would be fine with that as well. Number three. The new Renegade Power Rangers RPG. Now, this I actually have had an opportunity to play. I, at Gen Con, I got into one of the limited, like the limited series of play test versions of that. And I love the system. And I, more than important than that, I love the game the property and the way it works i the way it worked uh, we all sat around a table and we had all of the different rangers all six rangers and it's, it's specifically the power rangers rpg that's coming out from renegade is mighty Morphin. so if you're a big power rangers fan and you love things like beast morphers or dino charge or you know jungle fury all those other ones it's it's only set in the Mighty Morphin. So you're Zordon, Alpha 5, you're in Angel Grove, you know, Rita, and maybe Zed. That's all things. Bulk and Skull. It's, so if you're a huge fan of Power Rangers like I am, and I have, you know, a 5-year-old and a 2-year-old, and my 5-year-old loves Power Rangers, and I've re- recently fallen in love with Power Rangers and all different aspects of it. Uh, so I'm all for this, but I played in that one shot with a group of people who are huge fans of Power Rangers, and we had a total blast. I love the different mechanics of how the different Rangers have different powers and different abilities, which we kind of saw in the show, but they kind of have played that up a little bit more in the terms of the game because it's a game, right? So like, you know, the Green Ranger, who's the sixth Ranger, is better fighting solo than he is fighting with the group. You know, the Yellow Ranger is much faster than anybody else and can do more quick style attacks. The Red Ranger is kind of the has abilities around being a a leader. Uh, The the Black Ranger is hardier, tougher, but also kind of has like Bardic style abilities. The Pink Ranger is like a ranged weapon expert, things of that nature. And I, I thought it was awesome and I would love to play it. I have been in contact with Renegade Games about setting up some sort of working together when review copies come out and possibly getting to uh, stream and run some campaigns on it because I, you know, I would love to run it, but as with everything I do, I would always enjoy playing it more. And, you know, who doesn't love to shout it's Morphin Time? Number two. I've talked about it before, the Alien RPG. Another, this is just a really me just talking about all of the franchises that I'm a huge fan of, but Alien is another one that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, I remember being intrigued by Alien when I was in elementary school, which obviously I was way too young to watch it, but I knew of it. Uh, and I was, uh, you know, around when the Alien action figures were coming out for the failed and never existed Alien cartoon series that was supposed to come out in the 90s. And one of the kids I knew in elementary school was a huge fan of Aliens and bought all of, like, had all of the action figures. So, like, I, he would always be talking and, like, showing off all of his action figures. So that kind of it piqued my interest in the Alien franchise, and it has only grown since then. 
Um, it's unfortunate that I've had to suffer through things like the Alien vs. Predator movies and Alien Covenant and whatnot there. But either way, uh, I would love to play in this. And this one is actually going to happen. I spoke with Free Leak Publishing at PAX Unplugged, got a copy of the book, spoke to some friends there, and we actually have a Game Master and three players set up to play Alien, and it is going to happen at some point this year. We will be live streaming it, and then all of the videos will be available up on Nerd Immersion Plays for you to check out after the fact. So I'm very excited to do that. So be on the lookout for that. So this is actually when I'm putting it on the list because I do want to play it, but I have actually set stuff up to get a chance to play it in the future. Number one. Changeling the Lost. If you knew me in like the early or the, the late 2000s, I fell in love. Again, it's a World of Darkness property, right? So Changeling, uh, Changeling the Lost is sort of the, what do they call it? The Chronicles of Darkness. It was for a while the New World of Darkness, and then they changed it to Chronicles of Darkness. Um, there's a lot of confusion. I can see how you could get, because there's Old and New World of Darkness, and they have all of the same properties, but the subsequent name, like it's Vampire the Masquerade versus the Requiem, changeling the dreaming versus changeling the lost different stuff but uh and it, there's different feels to it but changeling the lost is just that whole concept of fairy and the fae and the way they handle it in those books is just i i absolutely love it i have never played that game before in my life but i own every single book in its entire run because i was buying Every time a new Changeling book came out in the first edition, I know they have released a second edition since then, and I backed it on Kickstarter, and I did get at least one uh, of the second edition books. But I bought every single one of those books, and I would just sit down and read those books, not even looking to understand fully the mechanics of the game to know how to play it, but just for, like, the interpage stories that would tell, like, the little, like, short stories they'd have in the books as well as to like the the world that they built and all the different ways that things could happen and cool techniques you could do as like a game master of how to alter and change things and i i just the concept and it was amazing and i just i i, I just i can't express how much i want to play this game and i had bro i had brought up the topic with my friends at the time when a lot of us had less responsibilities and I was like, hey, you know, we finished D&D. We had, like, played a campaign and it ended. And I was like, what should the next game we should play be and who should run it? And I had set up this whole elaborate lottery system and, like, uh, you know, okay, here, you know, so-and-so, you're going to play, you're going to run this game and we're all going to play it. And then we're going to decide, okay, do we like this game? And we had done it, I think, for Mage and Vampire was all we got to go through. And I was like, you're going to, here's a one-shot for Mage, here's a one-shot for Vampire. I was going to do one for something else. We are all going to get a chance to have somebody run a game. And I was like, I don't want to run Changeling. I want to play it. But like typically happens with any time I bring this stuff up with my friends, they're like, well, you know it so well, you should run it. And that's kind of been the what's happened to me with a variety of different RPGs I've tried to get them to play. They're like, well, you know it, so you should just run it. So Changeling the Lost, my number one uh, RPG I'd love to get a chance to play in. I'll throw out a couple other uh, runner-ups here. Uh, I've heard Blades in the Dark. I've heard a lot of good stuff about that. There's a Ghostbusters RPG uh, from the 80s that I think would be a lot of fun. That's another one that I tried to get my friends to run for me, and they told me, Ted, you know it so well. You should run it. Um, I know there's a Dragon Age RPG. Um, I was a huge fan of Dragon Age, so that could definitely be something I'd consider but I don't know. I'd also like to take the opportunity to have you guys sound off in the comments. Now, again, we don't all know each other personally, but you've gotten a feel for who I am and the kind of things I like from this video, but also from other things I've made in the past. What do you think is a is something that I should play? A lot of people have told me I should try out Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, or Starfinder because it's so closely related in a lot of ways to D&D, &D, but slightly different as just... I mean, maybe I should just for market research so I know I can talk about these things. But please, oh, Numenera is another one I've heard a lot about. Um, there's a whole bunch of RPGs out there. So I did my research, and these are the ones that I remember 
hearing about and wanting to play. But please, if you know one you think that I'd be a huge fan of, sound off in the comments down below. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for continuing to support me and the channel. And I will see you all next time.